Hey guys, um, this is another video um, for Math 2400. In this video, I'm talking about um, Euler's phi function. Okay. First, let's define it. Okay. Let M be. Or equal to one. Let's say two. Let's just be safe. No, I guess we can save one. And let's define phi of m to be the size of um. Um, first, okay, what is phi of m? Well, it's the number of integers j, so that's such that the GCD of j and m is 1. And one is between j, let's say zero is between j and m. Okay. And to prove this, um, For each congruence class, a bar and u m, right? A is q m plus r, with r as the remainder. And notice that the GCD of R and M is the same as the GCD of A and M. Okay. And this works if M is at least two. And if m equals one, um, you know, m equals one, u m it has just one element. Um, and uh, this thing is also one. There's one integer j between zero and one, which has GCD one with one. Okay. So this tells us that five one equals one, and also the number of integers j with um, zero less than or equal to j less than or equal to one. And the GCD of j and one is one. That's one as well. Okay. So this also agrees in the case that m equals one. Okay, so that gives us a way to compute phi of m. For example, um, what is phi of 12? Well, we can just compute it by hand because we can write out um, integers from 1 up to 11. And cross out anything which has 
uh, uh, like a prime factor in common with 12. Okay, so 12 is 2 squared times 3, so cross out anything that has any 2s or 3s. And we're just left with, um, so first of all we can say that the units mod 12 consists of just 1 bar, 5 bar, 7 bar, 11 bar, but not only that, it tells us that 5 of 12 is 4. Okay. Um, as another example, phi of p, where p is a prime number, is always p minus 1. Okay. Not only that, we can compute phi of p to the n, which is p to the n minus 1 times p minus 1. We're all primes, p and n greater than or equal to 1. Okay. Okay, so we have this thing called the Euler I function. Okay. So we have a theorem which is kind of a generalization uh, Fermat's little theorem. Why do I call it a generalization of Fermat's little theorem? Fermat's little theorem says that a to the p minus one congruent to one mod p. If the GCD of a and p is one, well, that means that uh, we see that phi of p is p minus one. So that tells us that a to the phi of p is congruent to one mod p. And um, oil. This theorem of Euler tells us that this is true if you replace p by other numbers. So um, let m be greater than or equal to 2. Let a be an integer whose GCD with a of a and m is 1. Then a to the phi of m is congruent to 1 mod m. Okay. And the proof is, I mean, I, I'm not going to really go through it in detail, but it's basically the same as um, the proof of Fermat's little theorem. So let's just sketch it. So this is a sketch of the proof. Um, you look at Um, representatives for UM that would be like one so that would be uh, let's call it S which is all the j's, such that 1 is less than or equal to j, less than or equal to m minus 1, and the GCD of j with m is 1. And you notice that this is the same, okay. Okay, maybe we should put it like this, and then let t be all the things that look like a times j, and where j is in s. Okay. And then the claim is that both s and t give representatives for um and then after you claim that then you just take the product of all the things in T and notice that's the same as the product of all the things in S. So then product of J and S is the same as the product of A times J where J is in S 
and that implies that uh, that gives you this formula in the same kind of this using the same strategy as a proof of Fermat's little theorem. Okay. Okay. So that's going to be the end of this video. Um, thanks for watching.